This conference will now be recorded. Uh, good evening, everyone. So we'll start with uh, today's session. So yesterday we discussed about the basic. Uh, okay. So before that, I hope everyone is able to hear me. So if you can, someone can respond. That would be great. Yes, can hear you. Oh, sure. Thanks. Okay. So as I explained uh, yesterday, we are discussing on the. Server architecture of Dynamics 365. We understood the uh, three-layer architecture uh, and the basics of model. So we'll be discussing more on the model structure today, and uh, that is the core part of Dynamics 365. So uh, if you understand that, that would be you are in a good position. So just please uh, pay attention to the discussion. Uh, so when we discussed yesterday, we understood that we have three-layer. Uh, uh, so it starts from bottom to top if I explain so the bottom layer is called database and then we have our Application object server where we have our metadata code and where we run the business logic and then third layer is the client and the UI 
where we have our client uh, is there present and there we can just go and uh, see the application we can do the perform the actions and these three layers keep on interacting and then i showed you like we have the sql database we have our erp application and then we have our visual studio uh, which is not the us but the development space uh, where you go and uh, do our coding on that so this is from the uh, three layer architecture point of view now coming back to the model uh, so uh, i think okay i think let me share my screen Okay, so when I say about the layer architecture, so this one we discussed yesterday. So models are basically uh, folders. We show, saw what are the folders, right? And also the XML artifacts. So each object, what you see, what you work on will be created as a XML. Now, uh, what is the purpose of the models and why Microsoft has in, uh, included this model? So uh, previously what happened uh, with, with uh, the older applications, so what used to happen? It was a uh, it was a code base uh, which we got the access for. Right now also we have the access for the code base. Everything we can access. So if you go and see this, uh, here we have under view. If you go to the view and we'll go to the application explorer, and uh, if you just open this up, so uh, this actually lists out all the objects. Your data model contains your table queries. Your data type contains your uh, different extended data types everything you can see from your user interface you have forms menus all those things are there and there are reports business process workflow bug, uh, security configurations all these things are there right now uh, previously uh, the structure it was same but uh, what used to happen the objects here you can see uh, let's say i go to the tables if i open the table uh, and you will see a list of like close to 5,000 different tables is available. And if you see each of the objects, which is these tables, are uh, actually uh, mapped to a model. Okay, so this accounting distribution is mapped to source documentation. Similarly, your accounting distribution event temp is a temporary table. It is mapped to sub-ledger model, model, right? All these models are there. This is the current structure. So in the older structure, what used to happen that uh, all the objects, we had the complete access and we could just go and change anything in there. So what I mean that, so let's say this table is there and I need to go and add few columns into that table. So if, if you are not understanding the table, if you do not have, have any knowledge on that, it is fine. So just think of an Excel. So if you have your rows and columns, rows are the data and columns are the uh, data types. Now I want to go and add few of the columns into that table. So once I do that, that means our base object, this accounting uh, table is getting changed, correct? Because whenever the object was created, Microsoft has created or shipped that product based on this model, right? Uh, based on this object which they have created maybe with uh, seven different columns so if i just expand this uh, i'll see how many columns are there so here i can see there are a lot of columns okay yeah i think maybe 20 30 different columns are here right and now we have a requirement that you go and need to change it so previously what used to happen you had the complete access of this object you can simply go and change it right and add a few columns now it is not only actually restricted to the columns you can go change the code you can go to a class change the existing code comment out that code write your own business logic so that was the process which was involved in the older versions so that means let's say if i go to my class so let's say open a class so let's say just open the code and go to the classes and uh, let's open something So there are so many classes you can see. So let's say which is a very common example is a sales uh, sales invoice report. So any company who whoever is selling something, they are giving you a bill, right? What we call as bill or receipt. 
so that is uh, from the company's term is called invoice they give you an invoice right and every company has their own invoice format so some will be having some logo some different uh, item numbers and all those things right so they are to create a different logic for each invoice so uh, that report there is a class called sales invoice db so this is a class and you can see this is actually marked to application suit out now if you just right click and uh that's a bad idea anyways uh if you can just when we open this uh, object actually uh we'll be able to see this is a very uh complex object uh, but uh only oh, let's let us get it open so the concept is whenever uh, this object we were uh, going and uh, we had the complete access to change it so any code which is written in this uh, class we can have the access of completely going and uh, changing it so if i open this designer so it will yeah so this class has now this class has this many methods which is there okay and this this these are methods and here under this methods it has code written it right now the very common methods are very common uh, method i can tell you like let's say uh, we have a method called uh, you call yeah insert yeah the insert data insert data right this is a very common method which is called insert data so we might need to change some code in that right which is in insert data and this is for india so i am so this is uh, insert data into some uh, the new columns insert data into some or change some values in that so what you used to do you could go into that method simply open that code comment out if you do not like a line or if you do not need it and go and change that so problem happens when you do an upgrade or update into the application and microsoft releases those updates uh, which actually updates your application periodically like how we do an app update right so every application has their update so when you do an update so what microsoft does microsoft will change their own code correct they will not touch our own code so they will go the microsoft developers will come to this method they will write some new logic into that whichever is new functionality is in uh, is included as an example uh, the before 2000 uh, some uh, when yeah, 2006 17 we had the uh, sales tax in india right and the vat the sales tax and vat and then we moved on to gst correct so the tax engine and everything got changed so do we think that uh, the existing sales tax if that was applied uh, customers stood by it they would not right because they want the gst to be included into microsoft dynamics so whenever microsoft is implementing those code changes those logic they need to uh, change their own object which is this object and object i mean and the code base and all the columns in the tables and different things so that was a huge challenge and we used to sit uh, into that because whenever but there are some changes in that we used to see it compared the code and we need to bring that code in so that was a complex process now with the advent of dynamics 365 micro what microsoft has done they have actually uh, actually taken away that access okay we do not have that access anymore where we can just go and change the code and to do that microsoft has included that all the objects are stored in a model so this model so this model application suit contains this class sales invoice db and with this dynamics 365 you do not have an access to go and change this change this object so the question is how do we change the existing object because that is also needed right so there we have an options of extension and overlay that i'll come to later after five or ten minutes but just understand we do not have an access for that the benefits of that is first in the update we do we are not worried about the, uh, the objects or rather customers and microsoft they are not worried about what happens to our existing code because microsoft will only touch the code which microsoft owns and they own all these models and all the objects in it if we want to do any change i have to go and create my own model without that i cannot do one single thing in dynamics application that is the core concept of it i'll show it to you now but the concept is i have to have my own model otherwise there is no way i can do anything not even changing the existing object or creating a new object all the roads leads to creating a model correct now uh, this is a core concept of so this dynamics is how the model and object structure is created 
coming back to the benefits uh, uh, so one benefit which we discussed which is the major is the update second benefit is uh, whenever uh, so microsoft is basically uh, uh, enhancing the product or it is adding more and more capabilities functionalities each year and uh, this product this dynamics 365 product uh, most of the work is actually microsoft outsource it, it happens i'm just telling you this as, as a fact microsoft does a, their engineers or uh, their uh, product team they don't do more do most of the work most of the work is being done by someone else some third party customer something so take an example i'll just give you an example on and also microsoft buys the uh, third party solutions which are built on top of dynamics so what do i mean by that so in the older version the ax2012 version uh, the warehousing capability was not that great and by the warehousing i mean uh, if you have seen some videos of uh, like warehouses of amazon flipkart uh, that uh, blue dart you see like all those warehouses big warehouses the conveyor belts are running the one packet is moving from one to another place those all those cranes and small, they are moving those packages all that is a warehouse right and you need a robust solution to capture all those functions how you stocking the item how you are uh, like releasing the item how we all the sales orders your delivery transport is happening so those are all critical operations which uh, any warehousing company of any trading company needs so in the older version microsoft did not have that capability it had but it was very basic level so uh, microsoft understood that it was not uh, they cannot go to a big uh, warehouse company or big trading company with that solution because they will not buy that simple there was a small company uh, from us which is called blue horseshoe okay uh, that's a uh, that's a actual company i'm not making this up so they what they did uh, they knew that microsoft was lacking this functionality they built that warehousing module on top of dynamics 365 okay so that uh, the, so that that solution that isv or the, what we call an isv solution or third party solution was built on top of ax2012 and they built and they started selling that product to different companies who needed that warehousing solution correct and that uh, got attention to uh, got attention from microsoft so microsoft understood okay this solution is good uh, we can if we buy that we we can simply include that to dynamics product and we can sell to all the customers correct and microsoft did exactly that they bought the company blue horseshoe they bought that product and right now if you go and buzz, uh, buy the dynamics 365 product you will see there is a warehouse management uh, module is there and that has robust capabilities and so many different features into that but did microsoft engineers they did build that the answer is no the blue horseshoe team they did that similarly there are other different different models different different new modules which microsoft keeps on um, including in the product which microsoft actually hasn't built they keep on acquiring companies with some small small functionalities and they go and build that so let me show you a few things so if you go and uh, see from the model view right click and go to the model view so there is something called as uh, let's say yeah see the virtual entity like and this is a, a third party of some microsoft has developed and also if you go to credit management these modules are, are the basically these are basically separate models are being developed by some other companies and microsoft has acquired that right and when they acquire that they are buying the product right and when how they want to integrate that so this is the best way to integrate that so that third party solution they are also building that as a model and they just simply need to go and create the product and with addition of those models so that is the second benefit of that product so implementing the isb solution third party solution is much more easier and because different businesses can have different cap uh, i mean different needs different features needed across different different organizations microsoft cannot build everything on that so they keep on getting those products and buying those products acquiring those companies so that they can buy those so let me show you the warehousing oh, what is that 
yeah see this wms advanced this warehouse planning all these modules are basically coming from that company which is called blue horseshoe so uh, this is uh, actually uh, kind of the thing so tomorrow when you go and start, if you just uh, uh, build something on top of dynamics 365 what you have to do you have to start from model now uh, there is a key concept i just want to highlight here whenever you go into this solution this is a solution explorer i think this whoever has opened visual studio they know about it there is something a solution explorer and in that solution explorer you have to create a project and you have to start work on that project so but for dynamics the structure looks like this so if i show you so it is like uh, your object and then objects are basically you can uh, create from project and uh, this project are basically tagged to a solution right uh, but remember the important thing this project solution these are basically the placeholders this has no major impact uh, to the application so what has impl implications is the model so basically whenever you create an object it is basically tagged to a model so the objects are tagged to a model and that model is basically the key factor here and i'll show it to you now how we create that and everything but just remember this model is important and this project and solution are kind of a placeholders which you create for uh, doing some operations so let's say um, first you create a model so this starts with this so the flow is first is uh, first will be create a model and then you create a project under the model and then you create the objects for development under the project but the objects are to a model because this more project you are creating under the model so everything uh, if i go back and show you all the objects see uh, here these are the model view if you go back and see everything it is everything is stacked to a model you will not see any project name or any kind of uh, different name to it all these are basically model names so all the objects are basically tagged to models so that is the important this is the structure. This is the structure. You should know that uh, we are creating the model, creating a project under model for our development work. And, work. and what do I mean by that? So under one model, let's say today I ask you go and uh, do a customization on the sales invoice report. So what you have to do, you have to open this class and do some customization. Correct. And this class is actually tagged to a model right and how we do that i'll just show you tonight but just remember this class we have to just uh, modify and this is tagged to a model so that i have to do some customization on that right and also tomorrow i ask you okay if you're done with the sales inverse report now go and change some purchase inverse report that's another task do we need to create an another model again the answer is no you can go and start your work under the same model but you can create a separate project for that because for sales invoice report whatever new object you are creating any existing object you are changing you will uh, create them under the same project similarly for the uh, another project for the purchase invoice whatever development work you are doing you will be uh, storing them in one project so each project actually basically refers to one development work or one small customization but everything is stacked to a model right this is the concept now uh, when I under, uh, when you understood this now, let us go and see this. Uh, this is important actually uh, And I will just come to the part how we can just create the models. What is the methodologies after this? So uh, this is actually model project models and packages So if you are good with this part, right if you are good with this part I think you understand that I have to create a model and under the model our project is right so now take an example of a, a real-life scenario so we have let's say 
we have three developers right or rather two developers who are uh, the junior developers uh, who are working under a solution architect or a uh, senior developer now the what the senior developer has done he has uh, created a model model one for developer one developer one and here he is tasked with five different customizations so he has given them to work on five different customizations so what will you do he will just simply go under that more de de developer one he will create project one to five correct so because just to do the work so more under model one so i just say model one the developer one will create project one to five all objects all the objects will be created in model one and which is fine now similarly we have a developer two and the solution architect has created a model two and here we have created a developer two and here he is maybe uh, creating three customization and here he has created project six to eight Okay, and similarly, all the objects are created in model two, right? So this is the same thing. So all the objects are created in model two. Yeah. Now, uh, once we are done with this, uh, this development is done. We need to do some testing on that, right? So just to see Micah? everything. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask one question? Uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, see, when you say model one, uh, no developer one will be, you know, uh, creating a few projects under model one, right? Do you mean uh -huh. uh, developer two will not have access to model one? I'll come to that. That's a separate thing. I'll just come to that. Just, uh, hear me out first. I'll come to that. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, once I'm discussing that, so model two, so the developer two creates this project six to eight, and all the objects are created here. Now, when you want to do some testing, I need to move the code. Right, simple. I have to move the code to another environment where the uh, consultants can go and test. So how do we do that? Uh, can we just simply move this model by model? Because it's a small project where I have only two models. There can be a project where 100 different models are there. Correct. Do we need to move each model? The answer is no. How do we do that? We have to create through a package. So our development objects, uh, all the everything is combined to something called as package and that package contains the all the models so if you say the package package or let's say package one and that package one can contain model one also model two okay and this package we will be creating this package to with this model and all the objects of all the of these two models will be storing in this package and this package will be moving to our uh, this so this uh, environment and similarly to our production environment. So this is the structure, correct? Now, uh, this is the basic structure and if we go and see this structure, this is exactly mentioned here. So this is a model one, let's say application suit and here we have three different projects. I created one, model two, I have two different projects and from these two models, I created a package one. Correct. This part I believe is clear, and this is what exactly I uh, I just wrote it down and I explained it to you. Right. Now uh, coming back to the slide, I think yeah, uh, this project six and seven I have created a separate model and I have a separate package, and that depends on package on this part I'm just explaining now, but just the, understand the first part, which is the core concept, right? So under each project, I'll be creating my objects and under this models, I'll be creating my, um, uh, uh, under these models, I'll be storing those objects. And these models will be created as a package and deployed to a different, um, a different environment. So this is the structure. Now, uh, the, now the concept of can uh, these two developers have, the uh, second developer can access the objects from these two projects. The uh, so answer is no. Uh, he cannot have this access of only these two objects but he can access that if he has a reference of the model one and what do i mean by reference i'll be just uh, explaining this to you now now 
understood this part i hope you have just followed me till now and we have understood the models the critical elements and we have uh, created like packages from the models now the key concept is how do we change the uh, existing objects right that is most important thing because creating a new object is fine but how do we change the existing object and i told you if you just few minutes back that everything is blocked by microsoft now so we cannot change the, any existing object but let's take an example sales invoice report purchase invoice report we do need to change right but because we cannot just go and simply start from scratch everything uh, for all the objects we cannot be, because there's no point of them do, using that here so what is the way out the way out is we have two concepts uh, one will be learning the other one is not needed because that is deprecated now deprecated means is not being used now so first is called extension method and second is called our overlaying method Okay, these two are the methods. How we go and change that? This extension method and these are the I'd say just uh, draw a line here. Okay, so these methods are basically used for creating a new model. How do we create a new model? So extension methods are is nothing but you go and give a reference to the existing models. What do I mean by that? I mean that. If we go back to our ERP, we can see that the sales invoice report lies in which model? It is in application suite, correct? If we want to change this report, I should create a new model with the reference of application suite, so that I can go and do an extension of this object, okay? And go and change that. That is called the extension method. So that I do not change the objects directly, I have a simple way to extend the objects. And when do, and when do we extend some object, it creates a new reference of that object. And you, as a developer, own that object. Okay, I'll just show it to you now. So now, and similarly, just show it to you now. Just before that, if we understood the extension part, uh, I mean, when I show it to to an example, it will be more clear. This overlaying part is, I'll just preview the concept. This is nothing but what we used to do in the older versions. What do I mean by that? In the older version, we have the capability to change the objects completely, right? We can go comment the code, delete some code, all those things we had we can we could do this is exactly the overlaying method so when microsoft actually built this erp they had both the methods extension and overlaying so we could go and change the existing object but with time like after few years one or two years microsoft has uh, taken this facility taken this uh, i mean actually re get rid of this functionality overlaying method so right now everything happens through the extension method so that we cannot go and change anything to our existing object. So this is just creating an instance of the of the existing object. And the overlaying method is just basically changing the existing object. Okay, so this is a uh, two concepts. Now let us go and see this seed. I think that will make you more understand more. Okay, uh, so here uh, once we once we have to start our work, let's say I just uh, tell you just we have to do some small customization, small some changes, right? What is the starting point? So I told you our starting point is what create a model. So we just go and do that, and we'll see how we can create that. So you have to go to extensions, Dynamics 365 and we'll do this hands on next week i'll give you uh, i'll give you the access how we can access this and do this i'll show you later but just this is just for seeing so you can just see it and just take a note of it so model management uh, i just go and click on create model 
and in the model name we have let's say we have just say demo visual path model and model publisher we have logged in as an admin right i'll just say admin and we have i just not put any description i click on next and now see the major thing so which is how we want to create the model read the lines so here it says create a model that builds into an SME beam price separate package choose this option if you want to extend the application so this is my extension route and this is the overlaying route which is still there but overlaying what do I say what did I say you can just go and change the existing objects if you select this option here it says that see including overlaying the source code if you select this you have only one option called data phase this model you can only go and overlay and if you go and see this model there is no <coughs> relevant objects to it we do not have so it is next to uh, i mean nothing right it, 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 i mean just giving this option means nothing now so we cannot do anything in there so we have to go and concentrate on this part which is creating our new package correct now once you select this and click on next here i can see all the model names which is already available in dynamics 365 this. Yeah, so see all these models are from A to W or Z, all the models are here, right? Now, uh, see what is the main model. See, this is inverse DPN, this is residing is what application suit, correct? Now, go and let's say uh, we select application suit here. Where is that? Here, see application suit, and application platform is by default selected and i suggest when you do that uh, select <coughs> excuse me uh, once you go and try to create a new model always just select this uh, three models which is platform application suit and application uh, uh, is a foundation yeah foundation application foundation these three okay because in these three models most of the objects which we work on are residing so we can just go and change that now go click on next and see this gives you a summary this is your visual path model and reference packages at this application foundation platform application suite. and it to give you an option to so create a new project and make this model as uh, default for new projects so if you just click on this it will create a new project so under the solution explorer you will see as a project right so just for our work so i'll just click on finish yeah it, it gives you the screen where you can just go and uh, give the project name and i'll just say like this is uh, my uh, demo vp visual path project one right and uh, solution create new solution or under uh, no i have to create a new solution with the same name solution name will also be or i can just keep it a separate solution name solution and one solution can contain multiple projects this is just for as a placeholder as a extender okay and create right now see this is created and if you create when it is created right click and see the most important property which is the model here the model is the depot demo vp model right which is the most important thing so all the objects will be created whenever you right click on the project and create any object it will be created under this model right and if you want to uh, select another model you can go and select from here correct now click on okay fine right and here now the requirement is i have to go and uh, create uh, some objects i'll show it to you but uh, the question which came up that uh, if we have these two models if we have these two can the developer from who is working on model two can see the objects from model one i said the answer is no and yes no because if we are not having this extension of this model yes when it is yes because if this model 2 is created and extending this model 1 so that this model 2 is adding that reference of model 1 then he will have an access of these models he cannot change them directly but he can create an extension 
okay i hope this is clear so here any objects which you are creating under any of these projects only you will be able to go and change or create an extension of it if in this model you have added that as a reference like the way exactly we did right the demo vp model we created and we added those three right application suit platform and adapter similarly whenever if you are creating the model too you have to select the x model one and then only you will be able to access this right so this is the core concept now coming back to the object so let's say uh, if we go to our different objects so i just right click here and just add something so a new item and we have this item just don't if you don't understand it is fine i'm just showing it to you now so how do we create an object so let's say we create a simple uh, let's what we call as um, enum let's say call as enum and just select a base enum and let's say uh, demo let's say customer type or something let's say customer type add this Okay, see this uh, model object is created, and see at the with the braces under the braces, you can see this demo VP model. So the object is lying in this pattern, and I can just go and add few values. I just go add a new element, which is um, let's say domestic customer, right? Domestic, and here we can have another value which is called. Uh, this I will discuss tomorrow. So tomorrow's uh, topic is base enum. We'll discuss that tomorrow in detail, but I am just uh, giving you some hands heads up now. So it's a foreign customer, right? So I save this, and when I build this, this will be reflected. Now, uh, quickly go and close this. Uh, this is a new object, and you go to your AOS directory. Remember, we showed right yesterday where you can see our models. So C drive. And the C drive, we have our AOS service here. Yeah. AOS service here. Yeah. And here under this package is local directory. Why this is acting so slow? Anyways, uh, this is under this package is local directory. You can see that model. So if I go down, see here it is a demo vp model see this is created correct uh, which i explained this is a folder which is created and when whatever objects you are going and creating you can see that in this folder right so this is the concept uh, which is a folder structure now uh, coming back to the here uh, application so this is getting so weird so let us Go and try to do some changes on the existing object. So let us go and pick a enum itself. So I think you can able to understand that. Uh, so there is a enum transaction tag, right? So which is a very common thing in any of the applications. So which is a transaction tag. So what is that transaction tag? Uh, so it can be from inventory transaction, customer, vendor, all these transaction types. So let us go and try to find this. I think there's enum called uh, trans type if I'm not wrong. So let us try to find that.
This is leaving so weird anyways. Uh, I just want to see that. Okay, this is not the value I think the I think let us go and expand on ledger trans type if we have something. Yeah, I think this is the one ledger transaction type. I'm not sure why this is. I think my internet is slow or something. Maybe. Yeah, we have this uh, different DDTs, right? Ledger settlement status or something. Let us take any one of them, right? Let's say latest settlement status. Let's say go and do the change of it. So, how do we do that? So, right click on this. So if we want to, let's say, go and change something, correct? So, <clears throat> and what do I say? That doing any change in the existing object, we have to go and create an extension. And what extension does? It creates an instance of that object. Now, if I click and right click on the list ledger settlement, uh, see this create extension is disabled, correct? This create extension is disabled. So if you have followed me, so anyone, uh, do we have any reason for this? Why this is disabled? Any answers from the audience? So, if you the question is, if I right model is not included in our this, project, I see create extension is disabled. The answer is exactly right. Uh, the model is not included in the project. The model is what general ledger, and we, what we have to do, we have to find our model. So, let us do that. Go to extensions, Dynamics 365 and we have our uh, model management and here we have update model parameters correct and click on that and here we have to select our model and i just say we have our demo it's a demo one Yeah, this is the one. okay and click on next and here now we have to select another reference package and what was that that was for general ledger right so if we have that let's say general ledger Add this click on next and it shows you reference packages is including general ledger now click on finish okay so this is done now uh just click on this and right click and we have still the not showing that at the so So let's see, we have our legend status. Yeah, settlement status, right click. And still you are not getting that reason we have to deploy this. Okay. Uh, just to give you the concept, so this is how we are actually uh, doing it, doing the changes. So this is what ex extension and extension look like. So our 
all the things we have so build is completed so right click on this now and we can just go and still it is not coming uh did we in a legend correctly I think uh, I don't know why it is not coming up, but it should be. Let's see from from the table. Can you do take some another model or something? Let's say take a sales table. Okay, uh, let us take this table, sales table, and this is a table which uh, uh, like stores all the sales data, right? Click, and yeah, here we are getting that. I don't know why that was not getting. I just uh, need to check that. But this is how we do an extra. So it gives you this much, this many options. So. You have the option to add to new project, duplicate in new project, create an extension, create an extension, and new project. So if you are extending into new project, so that uh, project also have to, uh, you have to give the project name, and that project also has to reference application suit, right? Now, if you create an extension, uh, what it does, you see, see, this is a new object which is created, sales table dot bpp model. So any under one model, you can create one extension only, correct? So this is the one-to-one -one mapping with the objects and the model so every model whenever you are doing an extension one separate object will be created and if i see show you the example so this sales table this is the main table right now if i go to something called as table extensions you will be able to see uh, there are a lot of sales tables which is created in different see see if we expand this uh, it is already we have these many extensions created for sales table. See for credit management, I told you right. This was been done by someone else. It had they have a model created called credit management. This one we just created for DOA model. They have created an extension. Uh, similarly for uh, uh, for application suit extension, they have created. So all the for TM rebate and deduction, they have created these two table. So all these are basically different objects. So this is a new object which is owned by the model owner, right? And the model owner is what the creator, whoever has created this credit management problem. So whenever is Microsoft doing some changes, they will not do the changes on the existing object uh, on this extension object. They will go and change it to the existing object. So all your changes are stored into this object, and you can just simply uh, your changes. Uh, each of your changes will be added to this extension, which is this one, sales table dot demo model. So this is where your changes will be added. So because you are not referencing these models, you do not have access to these objects. You are only accessing this object, which is the sales table and demo model. And here you can go add new columns, create some new methods. All those uh, methods will be seen in the next classes. But this is from the core concept part. What is my extension? How we are going to use the extensions, and what is the features of extension? Right. So 
I'll just stop the share and for next five minutes, if you have any questions, you can ask. Yeah, can can two sep two different extensions have same object name? Uh, can you come again? Uh, suppose there are two 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 extensions. Mm -hmm. Under those two extensions, extensions, can we have same table name like sales line dot extension yeah, in one? No, no, no. Uh, the extension name you cannot change. And under one model, there is only one extension. So two extension that what you are saying, it will be for in two different models. And those mm -hmm. that object name by default system will create it. If you want to change it, you can change it. But yeah, you cannot have the same name. Okay. Okay. Uh, you just showed Mike. that uh, we can extend a table as a table extension. Can we extend classes as well? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. That's a separate process, but yes, we can do that. We cannot go and extend a class. We can go and extend class methods. Class methods can be extended. Okay. Just last question. Uh, uh, you mentioned that codes or models cannot be changed uh, since Microsoft or whatever they have uh, shipped, those cannot be changed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, is this is it applicable to both on-prem version and on-cloud version both, or it yeah, is both. only for yes, on-cloud yes. no, version? No, no, both. both. On-prem version is just uh, the database is uh, sitting in your premises. Uh, in our Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, um, yeah, uh, can we extend the same type, uh, same table twice in a project in a one model? No. Okay. Okay. Maitha, uh, when we say you know, we need to create a model under the model, uh, we can create projects and on projects we will work the requirement, right? Uh, so you mean to say throughout the customer project, for example, I'm working for one particular customer. Will I have only one model and throughout that project, I will be working on that particular mo uh, model no, no, when, not, whenever customer no, no, some not, requirement? Not necessary. Not necessary. Okay. Not necessary. Uh, if we have uh like separate development team big development team working on different different um uh, i'd say different requirements then you have to create different models so it i mean as a best practice or a standard practice what happens is uh let's say if you are uh, customizing one model which is let's say sales process you are customizing then you will create a model for like uh, sales uh, customization like that Similarly, for inventory customization, you create a new model called inventory customization so that all the objects related to the uh, same process lies into the same model. Again, there is no hard and fast rule is there. You can again create one model for all your customization, but as a best practice, you can do that. And I mean, that is the process what is being followed. But this, uh, I mean, if you create one model and start all your development, stack all your development there. Uh, it still works. Okay, and one more question. Uh, see, maybe for example, I'm working on event related model. Okay, I I I did some changes, and you know, it is maybe deployed in the production. Uh, maybe uh, the same, you know, some requirement to the uh, inventory related. It has come, uh, and I'm not working. There is another developer, right? Uh, maybe that developer needs to work on that. So, will that developer uh, will have access to the you know, whatever changes I did? Yeah, if he is working in the same model as a so he will have the access for all the objects. So if you have, let's say, for inventory model, if you have changed something, added some new column, did some code changes, and if he is uh, working in the same model, he will have the access for all those things. Okay, no, no, uh, I mean, there's no problem with that. If he is working in a new model, that I explained, right? He has to reference your model, and then he will have access to that. Maybe I a little bit got confused. Yeah. So, so uh, it is like this, right? So, for example, I created one project with the same model, model as uh, uh, whatever is there, and then it is already deployed into production. This model is already present in the 
uh, in the uh, visual uh, visual studio or the uh, 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 version control okay so you'll be you'll be always pulling from version control the latest model and if you are working on another pro uh, if you are working another project and you want this table to be utilized and then get some details or you want uh, to have more fields to be added to that extension table itself in that case you will be adding into your new project whichever is that developer second developer is been working and he will uh, create the uh, fields of, for that extension table whatever is required am i right uh, yes if the second developer is working in the same model uh, he will simply go and do the like get latest of that object and he can start work on that if he is in the same model so that he will have access of that same object and he can go and change that object now if the second developer is doing their work from a different model so what he has to do he has to reference that model one in his model and he will have access to those objects and he can he will have not have a complete access he will have the access to do the extension on those objects right this is what we learned that when you do a reference of that model you have the capability to do an extension of those objects but if he needs to do a complete change of those objects he has to be uh, creating uh, he has to work in the same model itself otherwise he only have to do the changes through extension from another model Uh, you said something like package, right? Does we can treat this package as a chicken, chicken code? No, no, that package is basically the package, which is what we call as a deployable package. That package is basically uh, used for migrating the code from your development to test or test to production. And we have the option to create the package. I'll show you how to create the package. Uh, all this, I mean, in the later part, not obviously the starting part, I'm going to start with creating a package. But yeah, we have the access to create package and that is used uh, for uh, migrating your customization, all your code, face, everything. Okay, uh, just treat like in the same dynamics, two developers are working in the same time and one developer has done 40% work and based on this 40% work, another uh, developer can uh, start his work. So I haven't uh, published my code. How he can access this code? Because you said that we can, uh, he want to extend this model what I had created already. So yeah, yeah, uh, does it need to? Yeah. yeah. I, again, the important thing here is uh, if they are using the same model or not. So if they are using the same model, uh, then he can get hold of those forty percent work and start doing his work. If they are not, he has to create a new model and in that he has to refer that model and start doing his work. And after their work is completed, as a like a senior developer, you want to migrate the code. And at that time, you will have the option to include the models in your package. So that whenever you create the deployment package, Microsoft asks you, uh, or rather gives you the option which are the models you want to select and deploy so it can happen that developer one completes his work in model one and developer two is not uh, has not completed his work so you have the option to include only model one at the time of creating the package and you just deploy only the developer one's work after a month when the developer two has also completed then you will be able to select both the models and then you will deploy both the or work from both the models right so the in the package creation once we see that we'll see how that works and how the folder structure everything looks like there okay uh, i hope uh, it was clear right uh, so Tomorrow we'll start with the base enums and if any questions related to your uh, models and there all those things are there, we'll definitely uh, uh, circle back and we'll answer them. 
and in the meantime uh, <coughs> the, uh, excuse me, I have a small doubt. Yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, what is the source control we are using in the uh, 365? Uh, it's uh, actually maintained from DevOps, so you can just go and uh, use from DevOps actually. So if you have a connection with DevOps, you can go and use the source control. Mm -hmm. the, the code will be directly in the clouds? Cloud or on? No, no, in DevOps, no, no. In DevOps, you have to create a repository first, and you have to uh, once you select the repository, then your code will be uh, like all the branches and everything will be created in the DevOps, and in that repository, the code will be stored. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, basically, DevOps will work with when Azure on. It will be deployed on Azure, no. So. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, so our code will be there in the in the DevOps you mean to say? Yes, yes. If you are okay. using the version control, if you are not, then also you can go and do your work. Then no one is stopping you to do that. But yeah, if you are using the version control, then yes, you can use the DevOps. Mm. The TFS and uh, Visual Code, we are not going. It will be not uh, working with it, uh, 365. Huh? Uh, all of us are using DevOps. If it's actually honest, I haven't tried. Um, I just I can just uh, check and let you know. But uh, I haven't seen anyone using TFS actually. So Microsoft also uh -huh. using TFS now. I uh, also haven't seen anyone. So I'll check and let you know. But yeah, I yeah. hardly hmm. see anyone uses TFS nowadays. So yeah. Yeah, you are right. Actually, the people are moving to the DevOps only. That's uh, you are right. Yes. Actually. But the the companies who have the TFS, so uh, and that's what um, my concern. Because the most of developer they are work on the TFS, and uh, slightly yeah. now they are moving for the VOPS. Yeah, I mean from the interface wise, both are less more or the same. It's not much change in that. So but mm -hmm. I mean everything is more or less same. Yeah, this is the kind of a new version where you have more capabilities. I think we can okay. discuss more on that, but I can check on that. Yeah. So just remind yeah, yeah. me to go and just take and let you know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. One minute. One minute, uh, I have a small question that uh, you mentioned that uh, senior, I mean, uh, supervisor or the TL will uh, decide which model he want to make a package, right? For example, there are two developers. One is senior, one is junior, and junior created him model and he did his code, and uh. Be, and and in the same model does the uh, does the uh, senior developer can make changes from his pc because the model yeah. was created with other uh, pc yeah he can if he has access for the same vm he can do uh, same vm vm virtual machine ah say uh -huh, same vm so he will yeah, connect to that vm yeah, from that, that vm right. Yeah, he can do that. And if you're enabling version control, then he will uh, he can access from any VM. If he has connected through DevOps, he can access that. So at the end, they have to come to the junior developer PC, and in that PC only he can amend that model. Yeah. Okay. So once this model was converted to the package and published, and later no one can change this model. They can only extend, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, I think uh, tomorrow we can start our discussion on the base enums and then we'll be continuing with the sessions. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, have a good night. We'll connect tomorrow. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you.